Hello and welcome to your last minute revision for tomorrow's AQA Literature Paper 1 exam. I'm just going to give you some top tips that will really help you get the grade. During the video I will keep coming back to and demystifying the mark scheme for you to explain these eight things and if you understand these eight things you will ace this exam guaranteed. Now eight might be a lot of things to remember but many of my viewers say it's quite entertaining to play my videos on a much faster speed. Apparently I sound like a woman and you can listen to the video twice in the same time that it takes to listen to normally and therefore revise twice as quickly. What's not to love? Okay, number one on your list is how and why to plan. So the first thing I'll say is you get no marks at all for planning. So a plan should take you no more than three minutes. But a successful plan is going to dramatically boost your grade. Let me show you why. So here we are at the top of the grade boundary and the examiners want a well-structured argument. Well, that means you need to know what you think the writer's purpose is. What is the writer trying to get his readers or his audience to think? What is the purpose of the writer? Now, if you do that, you're automatically starting to plan a coherent argument. Next comes point number three. If you're planning a coherent argument, you need to spell out what your argument is going to be in your first paragraph. That's called your thesis paragraph. So let me show you that. Let's imagine that the question is about guilt in Macbeth. Well, you could start your plan by writing down Lady Macbeth and thinking about how she shows she's guilty. Uh, an advanced one would be to consider Macduff and his level of guilt when his family are slaughtered by Macbeth. And then obviously you can write about Macbeth's feelings of guilt. Well, that plan will help you, giving you things to write about, but it hasn't given you an argument that you're putting forward. You're not saying why Shakespeare makes these characters feel guilty, what he wants the audience to think about, and you're not saying why they might have different forms of guilt. So in your plan, you want to address that. So let's go back to Lady Macbeth. Well, the kind of guilt she feels is a Christian guilt. She worries about the damnation of her soul. She feels guilty about her part in helping Macbeth to kill Duncan and then starting a whole chain of murders that Macbeth carries out. Perhaps she also feels guilty for giving up her femininity, for asking to be unsexed and to become more male. Well, I'm getting closer now to Shakespeare's purpose. So, is Shakespeare's purpose to say that actually we need to follow Christian values? Is Shakespeare's purpose a patriarchal one, to say that women should behave in patriarchal ways? In other words, they should remain stereotypically female and not attempt to become powerful and have influence. And Lady Macbeth's guilt reflects society's view that um, she's punished for trying to become much more masculine, as well as for trying to kill Duncan. Then we can look at Macduff, who talks about being able to feel his grief like a man. So is his guilt there to teach what manhood is like? Is Shakespeare suggesting that feeling guilt makes us a better person? It certainly allows Macduff to find the courage to kill Macbeth, even though Macbeth seems invincible, slaughtering every man who tries to kill him. Then we could look at Macbeth's guilt. His guilt is quite interesting. He sees Banquo's ghost, which suggests he feels much more guilty about killing his friend than killing the king. Towards the end of the play, he says he has almost forgot the taste of fears, uh, he doesn't refer to any feelings of guilt at all. Perhaps he feels no guilt for killing Duncan. Now, what would Shakespeare's purpose be in that? Is he trying to show that Macbeth's feelings are entirely unnatural and therefore a warning against anyone for considering killing the king? Uh, is it that Macbeth is an atheist and doesn't believe in the power of God? 
and uh, therefore Shakespeare is condemning him for not being a Christian? Or is Shakespeare actually offering a subtle hint that perhaps there is no God? So when Macbeth describes life as a tale told by an idiot, is he actually accusing God of being stupid, uh, not offering humankind proper destinies, or is he saying that actually I'm an idiot in the way that I have lived my life. Um, if I had chosen a Christian belief, perhaps I would have led a much more successful and meaningful life so that my tale would have been told by somebody much more intelligent than myself. So this would then promote a faith in God. Now, it doesn't matter what you argue. What I've tried to illustrate for you here is that going through each of these points in your plan and linking those to Shakespeare's purpose will force you to get the top grades. Now I'm in a position to write my thesis paragraph so I can write about why Shakespeare has chosen portray to portray guilt in these three different ways with Lady Macbeth, Macduff and Macbeth. So that will help me construct an argument. Now let's have a look at what the examiner is actually looking for. At the top of the mark scheme, the examiner is looking for more than one idea or perspective or interpretation. Now the plan that I just showed you where you look at three different types of guilt in the question will force you to give more than one interpretation. In the example I gave, we were looking at whether Shakespeare is promoting uh, a faith in God or not, whether he wants us to sympathise with Lady Macbeth um, for her predicament, or whether he is attacking her for exceeding her powers in a patriarchal society. There's nothing in the Mark scheme that says you have to put forward a particular point of view. The examiner doesn't even need to agree with your point of view. They just want you to have points of view, interpretations, while you have a well-structured argument. Now, I hope most of you are looking at that and thinking, well, I can do that, Mr. Sanes. Will that actually put me at the top of the mark range? And the simple answer is yes. If you do that consistently in all your paragraphs, you will get the top grades. Now, let's imagine you don't do that brilliantly with every paragraph. You're still going to get at least a grade 6. Let's have a quick look at what grade 6 is. Your response needs to be clear, sustained and consistent. Well, that simply means you've got quite a few paragraphs trying to build up an argument. It must be focused if it's trying to build up an argument. And you will also be showing a clear understanding if you're building up an argument. So... This will absolutely guarantee you a grade 6, even if you write an argument that doesn't work very well. Again, having more than one perspective is plural here, and so you will again get at least grade 6. And that's true even if you've only been getting grades 4 and 5 up to now. You really can do this. Now, the one thing that's going to get in your way in this paper, the thing that's most important, is the extract. If you start with the extract, you're highly likely not to write a conceptualized argument. You'll instead be dotting about inside the extract, looking for quotations, trying to link those quotations to the question, and forgetting, because this is an exam and you're under pressure, forgetting to follow an argument. So this is why the plan is so important. I'm going to tell you, write the plan before you even read the extract, because the advantage of that is you will know what you want to write about. So let's go back to my Macbeth example. I know that I want to write about Lady Macbeth, Macduff and Macbeth, and I know my points of view about each of those. Now once I've planned that, I then go back to the extract and think, well, what in the extract will fit in with this? And it doesn't have to be a particular amount. It might only be one quotation from the extract for each of my characters, or just for two of my characters. Because you will notice, even at the top of the mark scheme, the word extract does not appear. 
And I'll say that again, the word extract does not appear. This is because the examiners don't mind how much or how little of the extract you use. They give you the extract so that even if you've never revised the play or the novel that you're studying, you've still got something to write about and you have a chance of not failing the exam. The extract is the examiner's way of being kind to you. Now, actually, I'm suggesting that it gets in your way because it only allows you to get a low grade if you suddenly get locked into quoting from the extract and therefore forget to write an argument. OK, let's zoom in a little. You do have to respond to the full task. Therefore, you do have to write about the extract. But there's no guidance from the examiner as to how much comes from the extract and how little. And that's why I'm suggesting to you that you plan first and then pick quotations from the extract that fit your plan and no more. Now, the examiners do confuse us a little bit because at the beginning of the question, they will say, starting with the extract. Now, again, there was nothing in the mark scheme I showed you which says you have to start with the extract. The only reason they say that, as I said before, is to give a sporting chance to students who haven't done any revision and don't know the text and therefore can't remember any quotations and need to find some in the extract. Um, you know, I'd be quite happy for those students to fail the exam, frankly. Um, and it's annoying that the examiners want to give them a chance. But there you go. The other reason I'm annoyed about that is it actually gives really good candidates the wrong advice. Because as I keep saying, if you start with the extract, it's really difficult to write a plan uh, and to follow an argument. Now, what I will say is if you are already writing at grade seven by starting with the extract, then do continue, that's fine. Very good candidates are able to write a coherent argument by starting with the extract. Uh, so I've got no issue with that. But if you're not getting grade seven already, one of the major reasons is probably because you're starting with the extract. Or if you're not getting the grade that you want and it's below a grade seven, it's because you're starting with the extract and not writing a logical argument. Now, the other bit of advice I often find out that teachers have been given, which is logical, is to do 50% of your answer on the extract and 50% on the rest of the text. And that is the wrong advice. As I showed you before, the examiners do not care how much comes from the extract and how much comes from the novel or the play. And so let's go to point seven to show why that's important. The examiners do want you to write about structure and form. Now, if you spend a lot of time writing about the extract, it's really difficult to write about the form of the text. And it's also quite difficult to write about the structure. So let me show you two easy ways to do that. If we go back to the idea of Macbeth, Macbeth is a tragedy. So why has Shakespeare chosen the form of a tragedy to write in? Well, you can easily link that to his purpose in trying to show that any sort of rebellion against King James is likely to lead to tragic consequences for the participant. And likewise, he chooses the form of the tragedy to show that women should not exceed their powers in a patriarchal society. Or, flip it the other way, to show that a patriarchal society suppresses women and leads to them behaving in unnatural ways. And therefore, in order to change the tragic fate of women, society ought to be less patriarchal. It's up to you to argue it any way you want. Now we can talk about the structure. Now the easiest way to do that is to think about where the extract comes and why the author has put it there. So for example, if we look at Lady Macbeth's lack of guilt, let's say the extract is right at the beginning when she takes the daggers back and places them on um, the grooms to frame them for killing Duncan. She speaks in a way that shows she feels no guilt. Well, Shakespeare would put that there to show the dramatic arc, the journey that her character is going to make from feeling no remorse to feeling ultimate guilt and remorse. That's why it would be at the beginning. 
Uh, why would Macbeth not feel guilt at the ending? Um, you know, when he talks about life being a tale told by an idiot. Well, this is the moment that he realises his whole life has been pointless. And this therefore shows that he deserves his death at the end and perhaps even welcomes it as a just punishment for trying to take fate into his own hands and committing regicide. Or you can talk about the structure of why it's Banquo's ghost that Macbeth sees and not Duncan's ghost. You know, does Shakespeare personally believe that killing one's friend is actually a worse crime than eliminating a king? Or does he present this to show how warped Macbeth's perspective is, where he can see the murder of a friend as being worse than the murder of God's appointed king in the kingdom? And again, it's up to you to decide what your interpretation is, but when you start writing about why that extract appears in that particular point in the text, then you're dealing with structure. Now, the thing that's really going to round off your argument and make sure that you've got a coherent argument is by writing about the end either of the character or the text. When you do that, you're again naturally writing about structure. You know, why has the author ended the text that way? That's a structure. But also, what is the new purpose of the author that we find about from the ending? So, I get a double whammy by writing about the ending. It helps me write about the author's purpose, and it again helps me write about the structure of the text. And those are both things that are going to get me the top grades. So that was quite a lot to take in. Well done for getting to this stage of the video. Play it again on 1.75 speed, and listen to me this time as a very informative woman. You can do this. Go on, get those grades. See you tomorrow in the exam. Good luck.